Howdy, Axe. I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing too right now. Is it safe to drink the Kool-Aid? It's a loaded question. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. Drink it while you can. I'm going to have some. It, th this was a big win tonight. Um, it, it was an impressive win, and there's a lot to take from it. But right now, celebrate while you can. It's so few and far between, it feels like, right now. So you gotta, you got to enjoy it. I'll join you. There's my little something, something. And uh, let's, let's talk about this game, y'all. Um, what, what an, an interesting game, uh, a weird game. Ags win 51 to 10. If you're just tuning in for the first time, you're listening to the Aggie Central Podcast. It's a post-game reaction. I do one of these every week. Previews as well. Um, and I got a lot of good things to take away from this game. And they're going to progress into some really interesting questions. Um, questions I don't know that I'm going to want to ask and are probably going to lose some sleep over. But nonetheless, let's start off with talking about the player of the game, Jalen Henderson. Uh, and I'm going to say this with kind of a little smirk, but man, we know how to develop some QBs, don't we? <laughs> wow. So QB3 playing today. And the first interesting question that I'll allude to is that if Max comes back healthy next week or the week after, who is going to start? Who's going to start that game, y'all? So let's get back to him, though, because he's the player of the game. Uh, let's get his stats up here real quick. I'm going to have to pull these up. But through like the first half, it was 104 yards through the air, one TD uh, to match that, 55 more on the ground, and two more TDs. This guy was a beast. He finishes up with 150 yards uh, and two TDs through the air. Adds another 60 yards on the ground in total. Two TDs. Two TDs. And guess what? Uh, how many turnovers? Zero. Zero turnovers for this guy. What an incredible effort to come in on short notice and play as competent as he played. So... I can't say enough about this guy right now. Um, he breathed life into this offense. Or did he? This is another question that's going to come up. A, a lot that's happening throughout the, the whole game. I mean, I'm just, my, my phone's blowing up right now. If you can hear all the notifications coming through, I don't know. But a lot of excitement about this effort tonight. Okay, and I think a lot of it comes from not just the QB, although that's what we're seeing. The game plan, the game plan was just completely different. So reminds me of the Francione game plan circa 2007, right? This is circa uh, the last game of the year, 2007, against Texas. We, we go into that game, and we just completely rewrite the game plan with Fran. Instead of it being more of a ground and pound, we just start slinging it around the field. And it just kind of comes out of nowhere. And it's like, where have you been all year? We've been waiting on this for forever, right? And this is the sort of thing that we, I think we've been looking for out of this offense. And that is to do something that tailors itself to the strengths of the QB, right? So that's kind of what the game plan was about. It was adaptive, it was responsive, and it was dynamic. Everything we've been just screaming, I feel like, at the top of our Twitter lungs for, what, eight, nine games now to please do. So what happened? I mean, we're running tunnel screens. We're running hurry up. We're snapping the ball with 20 seconds left. We found a, a boot in the playbook. What, what, what is this happening? I mean, the boot was, was fire. It was, it was amazing. And the defense didn't know what to do with it when, when Henderson – booted out he, they didn't know if they had to come up and cover him but they would stay back because he could throw it and the dude's got some wills he is quick he's fast he's a different kind of runner than Weekman. probably got just a little bit more top end speed and man uh, he he knows how to he knows when to slide as well <laughs> something i guess you just have to naturally do but um it begs the question and i think what happened here was Petrino just had to put his foot down. <laughs> Petrino put his foot down, and he said, you know, um, this is the way we're going to do it. 
Now, I don't know that. It's fun to speculate, but it, it essentially that's what it looked like happened, right? And it's got me left wondering, like, who wears the pants in this thing? Um, I don't know who wears the pants in the family at the moment, but um, we're going to have a bit of a theme of that running throughout because the, 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 the difference in the way this team looked this go-around versus other weeks, and I did think it was coming on last week against Ole Miss, I uh, had, I mean, almost, I think, an identical prediction to where we, where we are, uh, performed here. We did a little bit better on both, both ends. I think I had this somewhere in the neighborhood, 38, 42 to like 17. We ended up, what, 51 to 10. Um, so both, both sides of the ball played just a slight bit better um, than I expected. And, of course, we get the, the Shamar Stewart scoop and score. And I got one upgrade for the dude. Listen to me, Shamar, one upgrade, man. When you do that, you have got to channel your inner Michael Clemens. Remember Michael Clemens circa like what 2021 scooping and scoring on Auburn, man. You come on, you got to give that to me next go around. Many more to come for that guy. Um, you know, we might have us an interesting matchup in two weeks in Death Valley. You know, we're gonna go, we got eight, what, ACU, Abilene Christian next week, and we're gonna go get that win. Um, we're gonna see more Marcel Reed in in, in the um second half which we got to see him in the last drive. Looks very interesting. I'd like to see his development come through. And uh, what's going to happen in Death Valley is going to mean something. Okay, we're, we're bowl eligible at this point. At that point, we'll be playing for eight and four, right? And that, that game at Death Valley, if won, will give us an opportunity for nine and four. And that makes me feel a lot better. But that better feeling is going to definitely be contingent on some things and I'll, I'll get to that here in a little bit i got a few concerns still though right special teams is a concern defense gave up three points it's one hell of an effort um what just over 200 yards i think 237 total yards given up uh, 104 through the air did give up 133 rushing but they're they're looking salty and we give up a kickoff return it's got to be better but i think we benefited once Finally, somebody made the boss move and removed kickoff duties from, from Bond, and uh, the rest did hit, look like the, it did him some, some benefit. He didn't miss a field goal, which is a happy upgrade at this point, right? The old line is still struggling. Um, they definitely, you can still see the struggles, but they weren't as pronounced. And it comes from what Jalen brought to the table, right? And the, and the boots and his ability to get outside the pocket. Um, you know, and they probably simplified the game plan just overall, right? Uh, I worry that we're going to get too complicated in the weeks to come. I think we're on to something here, and certainly we need to expand the playbook a little bit, but uh, we, we can't do it at the sacrifice of the execution, which is something we've been hearing about all year long, right? You know, I can't wait to hear the presser and hear us talk about how well we executed tonight rather than how well we scripted the game plan to go for the QB that we had and, and to benefit his strengths and, and his skills. Difficult, difficult question because here's what's going to keep me up at night. Because here's, here's, here's what we have. We have confirmation that the QB order depends on the coaches. It depends on who the coaches think fits their scheme. I think that's the first few games and everything we've seen through fall camp. We've been working this thing with which QB fits the system that we want to run rather than are we going to tailor the system to the QB? That's a frustrating thought, is it not? Very, very frustrating thought. Because why wasn't Jalen Henderson QB2 all along? Ugh. These are, this is, um, I, sorry, I have to do it to us at this point, but it, it, has to, it does have to be said. We have a nice recipe for how to succeed and how to progress moving forward, okay? But it's got to be executed by the coaches. 
The coaches have to execute that. The coaches executed excellently tonight. Yes, we, we played a, a Mississippi State team that was down some people as well. Um, they're down at what, QB two and three, whatever it was they had going on, uh, you know, uh, missing some other guys throughout. Talked about this in the preview, but still, 51 points. Held them to three points offensively. Those are, those are solid numbers against any SEC West team, y'all. Why weren't we doing this earlier? Whew. Whew. It's a question. So, big, big night. Game ball goes to Jalen Henderson for sure. Lots of great other efforts out there, though. Dalton Brooks looks like somebody who's on the verge. We saw um, Dindy tonight. We saw Hicks. Harmon looks like he's on the come up. He needs to progress still a little bit. Um, I, there was the one PI call late in the game. I didn't, I didn't agree with it. I thought it was just a handsy kind of situation. He probably just needs to get his head around better. If he could do that, maybe he misses out on the call. But he, he looks like he's getting better. Tyreek was a welcome back. Hopefully we can get East Dew back in two weeks. And Moss. Jalen ran well. Ruben what ran well. And of course, um, the extra wrinkle that Henderson provided was just really a game changer. Here's what needs to happen, y'all. At this point, we're bowl eligible. Like we said, your ags are six and four, right? So moving forward, take the keys to the Corvette away from Jimbo. <laughs> And let's see how far this can go. All right. We'll be back this next week and we'll check out the ACU game and then we're going to see what's going to happen in Death Valley. If Jimbo, you can, my friend, you can keep putting the gas in the Corvette, let Petrino drive. That's it from here tonight, y'all.